back, folks, to the Mel Wright Show. This is episode 236. I've really been looking forward to this interview. We've got Michael from Club Wealth, one of the leading consultancy for real estate agencies in the US at the present moment. So, Michael, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to our new listeners and viewers? I'd love to. So, uh, my claim to fame is uh, as a real estate agent for over 25 years, I very consistently was uh, selling between 120 and 180 homes per month. Uh, we had at one point in time 750 listings in active and pending status. Uh, so we ran the number one team in the country for a very long time. Uh, we did that with just 16 agents, which is the crazy part. Uh, so it wasn't like this massive, massive team. It was just really, you know, very focused, very successful folks. Uh, and uh, now I'm, I'm blessed. I get to, I own a company called Club Wealth. We're the number one coaching company in the team space. Uh, and although we work with agents at all different production levels from brand new to the top agents in the country, our average agent that works with us uh, does just about 200 transactions uh, per year. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of the bigger producers, uh, but we've got clients that are, like I said, brand new in the business. And we've got people that are, you know, doing four, six, 800 transactions a year. Heck, we've got brokerages doing thousands and thousands of transactions a year. So. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Michael. And I've just been looking forward to the discussion because Michael really knows what he's talking about. And we've got my great co-host, Robert. Robert, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the new listeners or viewers? Always. My name is Robert Newman. I'm one of the few, if not the only, inbound marketer that focuses on real estate in the U.S. Actually, anywhere. So let's just skip that and say anywhere that I know of. Uh, check out my website, Inbound REM, if you want to get a lot of free education on how to market yourself online. That's great. So let's just go straight into it. And what we're going to be discussing, we've got kind of a couple of topics. We've got kind of like the five habits that you as a real estate agent need to develop in this market at the present moment to get real success for you and your family. We're going to be discussing that with Michael. And I've just, I've just forgotten what the second one was. What was that, Michael? What was the second one we were going to kind of topic we were going to? You had talked about massive open houses, but I'll tell you, I think especially right now, I think we've got so much to talk about with just the five habits right. that we may not even get to that. And, right. and especially in the environment right now, I mean, open houses, let's call it what it is. Open houses are going virtual right now. Uh, they're still happening, but they're very much virtual right now, right. Uh, which is good. Um, and there's lots of ways to, to monetize those. But there's so much to talk about with the five habits that is going to really move the needle for the listeners right now that I think we'll spend a lot of time there. Well, that sounds great. So sh shall we start number one? And then after we've gone through it, I'll throw it over to Robert. Absolutely. Uh, so first and foremost, folks, grab a pen. I hope you got something to write with and write on because we're going to go pretty quick through a lot of this stuff. And uh, I'm sure you guys are going to have questions along the way. Uh, feel free to add, ask those and we'll, we'll dive into those. But understand that there are five critical habits that successful real estate agents have that oftentimes those that are less successful do not have. Uh, the first habit is lead generation. And it's, it's not uh, right. Right. Like that is the most important one. Like if you want to sell real estate, frankly, if you're in any business and you're not lead generating on a daily basis, you've got a problem. Now we're not talking about necessarily pounding the phones and calling FISBOs and expireds and cold calls and all that stuff. Although, those are ways to generate leads and they do work. Um, they're not necessary. There's lots of other ways to bring in business. Uh, you know, and frankly, what Robert does is a great example and, and what Jonathan does, what both these guys do are very great, good examples of how you can get leads coming in now without having to pound the phones and call cold calls. Uh, so the key though is that you need to have a diversified lead flow. And depending on how large your business is or how large you want it to get, you'll need to have more lead sources. You don't want all of your business just coming from one lead source because lead sources change in how much they bring in from month to month. Uh, so ideally, if I want to make a six figure net income in real estate, I'm going to have between 10 and 15 lead sources. If I want to make a seven figure net income in real estate, I'm going to have between 25 and 30 lead sources. Uh, so any thoughts on that so far, guys? Um, <coughs> Well, lots, but I want to keep going. Okay. So, like I'm, I'm fascinated, but, but keep going. So, so as a, I'll give you an example. The earlier you are in your career, the more likely you are to have more time than dollars, right? And so you spend more of your time bringing in leads than you do spending time on the other things that you need to spend time on, which we'll talk about in just a moment. 
But we want to transition as quickly as possible from chasing business to attracting business. And that's two very different things. What you guys do is you attract business, right? Robert and Jonathan go out and they bring business and they attract business to you. But until, you know, it's, it, it, it's going to take a minute when if you're brand new in the business, have no money, you're going to have to go get some money to be able to hire these guys to do that for you, right? And so you're going to have to spend a little bit more time bringing business in. But once you get to the point where you can start writing a check to have leads come in, now you can start transitioning to attracting business. And that's where things get really fun because now your time is better spent doing the other things that you need to do with those leads to turn them into transactions, which get into the next couple of habits. So I would suggest that the first three habits, again, starting with lead generation, need to be habitual on a daily basis. They need to take up 90% of your day. If 90% of your day is spent on the th first three habits, getting to six figures will be no problem, even if you're just working part-time in the business. Uh, I know a lot of people that work, you know, literally part-time in the business, they work 20 hours a week, and they still make six figures, but they're very focused during that time. So... Lead generation is the first habit. Now we've got about, there's right now, there's over 2000 lead sources in real estate. We've got about 109 that we recommend uh, that to our clients. There's of those, there's 17 and we'll do at the end of, the, uh, of our call today, I'll give you guys 17 of my, or give you the ability to grab a, a list of 17 of my top uh, 109. But here's the, what, I, what I would tell you. Every agent out there, as an industry, we struggle with lead generation. And if you don't believe me, ask yourself, why in the world do Zillow and Realtor.com exist? Because they recognize that agents are terrible at lead generation. So they said, hey, why don't we go fill this gap for real estate agents? And what they did was they took our data and they went out and got leads with it. And then they sold it back to us. And we were happy to pay it because now we had leads. We could just write a check. We could get leads, right? Well, that's great. But what they figured out is that the one thing that we're worse at than lead generation is habit number two. And that's lead follow-up, <laughs> right? So I would suggest that if you asked most agents today, what's the biggest challenge in your business today? They'd say, oh, I need more and better leads. And I would tell you, no, nah, probably not true. What you need is you need to follow up with the leads you have better. You need to do a better job of handling the leads that you have. Now, do you need to have your lead generation on autopilot? Absolutely. Again, that's where you guys come in. That's where Jonathan and Robert's products come in. But now, once you get that lead, that lead's only as good as your follow-up. If you just if leads come in and you do nothing with it, you've just thrown your money away. So how do I handle an inbound lead? Let's talk about internet leads, for example. I'm hoping that everybody on this call is getting internet leads at this point. If you're not, like, you need to come out from under the rock you've been under and you need to start getting internet leads because that's where the action's at. There's tons of internet leads out there. Uh, in that fact, I think last year there were 85 million leads and uh, I want to say just over five and a half million sales in the country. Uh, so there's lots of leads out there, but the problem is that most people aren't following up well with them. So when I get a lead that comes in from the internet, we'll use as an example, what, is, what do I need to do? I need to get very quickly to that lead. Any idea, guys, what the speed to lead is now that's necessary to convert leads at a high level? 10 seconds. That's absolutely great. Like if you can get to 10 seconds, that's phenomenal, right? If you're more than 30 seconds, you're behind, right? So right. somewhere between 10 and 30 seconds is where it falls. A buddy of mine, Robert Slack, uh, buys Realtor.com uh, leads as an example than any other agent. The guy spent $8 million this year on Realtor.com leads. He's got 450 agents on his team. He'll close, he's the biggest agent in the country. He'll close 6,000 transactions this year. And Robert's speed to lead is 16 seconds. So on all those leads he's buying, he's getting to them within 16 seconds. Problem is most agents think that they can wait three, four, five minutes to get to these leads. I got news for you guys. By then, they're already on the phone with another agent. And so you've got to get on those leads immediately. Worse yet, what's interesting, we did a study on one of our ISAs on one of the teams we coach. We, we found out that so when he, when he was bring, getting these leads, we said for two weeks, we wanted to make sure that he got his speed lead down below 30 seconds. So when the lead... And he didn't look it up. He just hand and called the lead. When he got the lead on the phone, I asked him to track how many other agents reached out to that lead while he was on the phone with them. And what he told me was four to five other agents on average in the first five minutes would reach out to that lead. That's crazy competitive, you guys. So what happens is if you're waiting three minutes, they've already reached, they've already had two or three agents reach out to them. Now, I know what a lot of agents are thinking right now. You're thinking, oh, but Michael, I buy exclusive leads. 
Man, there is no such thing as exclusive leads anymore. They're clicking on 10 different websites. Like, there's no such thing. So what do you got to do? You got to get your speed to lead down. Robert, if you can get it down to 10 seconds, man, that is golden. What a big difference that will make. Now, that said, how do I contact them? And then I'll tell you this, there's six different ways that you have to reach out to these leads. So write this down. Grab your pen, you guys. It's, there's phone, email, text message, video email, video text message, and my personal favorite is Facebook stalking them. <laughs> and you got to do all of them, right? I know Jonathan likes the Facebook. I always tell people that uh, Facebook stalking used to be a three to five year sentence. Now it's a six figure income. So, <laughs> no, Well, the good news is that we've covered those particular areas over the past year extensively, Michael. Yeah. That's huge. That's good because at the end of the day, if you're not doing those things, you're way behind and you don't know where people are going to connect with you. You don't know what their preferred communication method is. So you have to do all of them until you figure out what their preferred method of communication is. So that said, what happens when I reach out to a lead? I call lead. I get a brand new lead comes in. I call it right away. I'm in, I'm in the first 30 seconds and they don't answer. What do I do now? So this is where it gets fun. So the first thing I'm going to do if they don't answer is hang up the freaking phone. Don't even leave a message. Just hang up the phone. So now people are thinking, what the heck? Why would he do that? Well, because I'm going to do what's called a double dial. That means I'm going to call them up immediately one more time. If they don't answer this time, and by the way, quite a few of them do answer on the double dial. If they still don't answer, I'm still not going to leave a message. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to send them a magic three-word text message that's going to get them to respond almost every time. Huh. Can, you, can you guess what that message is? No, actually, I can't. No, no not three words. No. Three easy words. Here it is. Mm. Is this, and then whatever name they registered with, is this Susie, right? And almost every time they will respond, and they will respond with the following words. Yes. Who is this? Now, Robert and Jonathan, do you guys have kids? No. Okay, so for those that do, for the, for the people that are watching that have kids, you guys will know that if someone reaches out to you from a number you don't recognize and they don't leave a message, then they call you back, you don't answer again, and they still don't leave a message. And then you get a text message that says, is this so-and-so? The first thing that's going through most parents' minds is, oh my gosh, one of my kids is either in jail or in the hospital, depending on the kid, right? So all of a sudden now you've got their interest. All of a sudden, they're engaged. And so now, after they come back with, yes, who is this? You're going to send one more text message of three words, and you will get them on the phone 83% of the time. And I know that's a bold statement, but it's literally 83%. And here's the text message. Calling you now. That's all you say. Calling you now. You don't tell them who you are. You don't say anything else. You just say, calling you now. And let me tell you, this time they pick up the phone almost every time, 83% of the time. Now, when they pick up, some of them are going to be a little freaked out, right? Some of them are going to say something like, oh my gosh, I'd be so scared. I thought something was wrong with my kids. What the heck? What are you doing? And all you got to do is say the following. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You had reached out to me on 123 Main Street and I just wanted to make sure I wasn't dropping the ball on my end. That's literally all you have to say. And all of a sudden, they're disarmed. All of a sudden, they're saying to themselves, oh, oh okay, well, so first of all, they're relieved their kid isn't in jail or in the hospital. Second of all, now they're thinking to themselves, oh, you just want to make sure you didn't drop the ball on your end, right? It's kind of, it, it's, it's, it's just like that, that uh, well, let's say this. They will be glad that you said that, and they will be much more open to the conversation at that point. And then you'll follow it up with, look, I just wanted to find out if you wanted to see the house or if you wanted to know the price or know any other information about the house, I'd be happy to give you whatever you need. And it's very simple from there. Now, if they still don't answer, if they're in the 17% of people that, do, that still don't answer at that point, there's a very simple system for follow-up that I want you to get used to. Now, I'm very aggressive with the process, but never aggressive with people. We call it being pleasantly persistent. Write that down, pleasantly persistent. So how am I going to be pleasantly persistent? Well, I told you the six ways you're going to follow up, but how often, with what frequency do I follow up? And we have something called the rule of three that we follow. 
So the rule of three says, I'm going to call them three times a day for the first three days, three times a week for the next three weeks, and three times a month for the next three months. I'm going to get very aggressive with how often I follow up with them. Now, if I get hold of them today, am I, and it's my first time trying to get a hold of them in my first three days, am I going to call them two more times today? Heck no, of course not. No. But these numbers are used, this system is used until you get a hold of them. Once you get a hold of them, then you're going to, based on their situation, based on where they're at in their buying cycle, you will make a determination on how frequently you're going to follow up with them from there. For example, if they say, I'm not ready for six months, great, I'll call you in three, right? But I'm going to always cut it, whatever they say, I'm going to cut that time frame in half and I'm going to follow up with them then. Makes sense so far, guys? Oh, it, it, does, it really does, but we need to go for our break and we'll come back and we, we have more words of wisdom for Michael. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. I'm transcribing your shit, Michael. It's good. <laughs> Is this good so far? Is this helpful? Yeah, very good. Very, um, actually, so to me, it's a lot more helpful than a lot of the stuff that we do, which is real high level. And you're getting real specific. Yeah. I personally love that crap. Yeah. You know, we, we'll lose some of our more casual listeners, but we'll gain the attention of like real serious professionals. And, and that's, uh, that's really exciting for me personally. Cool. Well, can I come good. back? All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Welcome back. We've had a break. We've had a, already a really fascinating discussion with Michael. Um, and we're just going to continue back to the five things you got to do to get the success you're looking for, Michael. Right. So number one was lead generation. Number two, the second habit. So these are each habits. There's five key, key habits. Lead generation is number one. Lead follow-up is number two. And we just talked about how tenaciously we need to follow up. Now, he, what's interesting is, our industry has been under attack from the outside for a long time, right? First of all, they took over lead generation. Now they, now you've got with uh, the advent of like Op City and Concierge, you know, they're taking over the lead follow-up. Why? Because agents suck at it, right? Um, now, that being said, if you guys want to make more money, if agents want to reverse the downward pressure on the commission in a lot of ways, and they want to increase their profitability at the end of the year, you got to learn how to do these things. Right now, I'm not saying don't hire other people to do some of these things for you. I'm just saying you also need to learn to do these things for yourself. Uh, all right. So that said, Actually, I get, yeah, go ahead. I, I, for, for just uh, for the most part, I'm going to let you go to town. I have one thing to say here to capitalize on what Michael just said, sure. which is all these companies opt in and, and all these guys, what they're doing is they're taking advantage of an international workforce and they're hiring highly qualified, skilled workers who are used to being on the phone for three to five dollars an hour and they're charging you two to five hundred dollars a month if like michael said when you scale and you get ready if you know how to do this all you have to do is create a process once scripts once and you can cut your cost in half by doing it yourself that's all i want to say go for it michael 100 percent agree you are so right on that's exactly what's happening uh, all right so now let's assume for just a moment that i'm really good at lead generation i'm really good at lead follow-up Here's where agents are also struggling, lead conversion, right? So they get all these leads come in, a really good job following up with them. Then I finally get them on the phone. How do I set an appointment? And here's the problem. We know less about lead generation than freaking drug dealers. Now I want you to think about this for a second. Drug dealers are great at lead conversion. Why? And I've never done drugs. I've, I've, not, I've never been that guy. But why are they so much better than real estate agents at lead conversion? It's simple. They've got, they've got it down pat, right? With real estate agents, somebody calls up, what do they want to do? They want to get them to get pre-qualified or pre-approved right away, right? So we make them jump through all these hoops. We want them to conform to our way of thinking right away. And instead, what we should be doing is serving them. What the drug dealer says is, no, 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 I'm going to give them what they want right now. You want drugs? Great. First one's free, then you got to pay. That's what they do. They give you a little taste. They get you hooked. Then all of a sudden you, you need them. It's not even want them anymore. Now you need them. So how do you do this as a real estate agent, right? Because you can't just give them a free house. Well, here's the key. You got to understand that the house isn't the product. You are the product. If I ask every agent in the country, do you sell better voice to voice or face to face? Guess what? Every agent in the country would tell me. Face to face. Absolutely. 100%. And so guess what? Stop requiring them to get pre-qualified or pre-approved before you go show them houses. 
if somebody wants to see a house and granted it depends on what's going on in the, in the world at the time. I know right now, as we're recording this, we got this COVID stuff going on and we're doing a lot more virtual showings now, virtual buyer appointments, virtual listing appointments, and we're having great success with those things. That being said, even that can be and needs to be face to face. Get on Zoom with them. You need to get face to face. First one's free, then you got to pay, right? Because once they get to know you, they're much more likely to build rapport with you and want to do business with you. But if you're just trying to do things over the phone, it's th that relationship will not be formed. All right. So we've got to get face to face as quickly as possible. Now, a lot of people say, oh, but Michael, I don't want to waste my time with a bunch of unqualified buyers. Well, that's fine. So once you have scheduled the appointment, never before, but once you have scheduled the appointment, then I'm going to give you a script, write this down. I'm going to give you an easy script that will get them to want to speak with your lender. Very easy. Here we go. If they could save you ten dollars to $20,000 on your mortgage, would you be interested in chatting with one of our lenders? If they could save you ten dollars to $20,000 on your mortgage, would you be interested in chatting with one of our lenders? What moron is going to say no to that, right? Like nobody would ever say no to that. They're always going to say yes. You have to start asking questions that, that cause them to want and need to say yes. So all of a sudden they'll say yes. And you say, fantastic. Is this the best number to reach at? Great. I'll have my lender reach out to you here. And you don't give them your lender's information. You give your lender their information. And that way now you're the connector and you, cause you don't, you know, that person's probably not going to call your lender. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But if you give their information to your lender, you know darn good and well that your lender's not going to drop the ball. They're going to make that phone call. And guess what's going to happen when your lender gets on the phone with them? They're going to be endorsing you, just like you're endorsing your lender, which is far more powerful than you or your lender standing up and saying, look at me, look how great I am, do business with me. So lead generation, lead follow-up, lead. those are the first three habits. And those three habits need to make up 90% of your day. All the rest of the stuff you do in your business is noise. All the other stuff can almost entirely be sourced out to an assistant. And speaking of assistants, I'll give you something else you ought to write down. If you don't have an assistant, you are one. And it is so true. I mean, if you don't have an assistant, you're doing assistant work that you could pay somebody 15 bucks an hour to do for you. And you need to stop doing that. You need to be out there doing stuff that pays 150, 250, $550 an hour or more. Uh, so get away from that assistant type work. Do we have time for the last two habits? Oh yeah, definitely. How much time do we have left? Well, we've got another 10 minutes so then we can okay. have some, we can have some bonus content after the podcast <laughs> if you're still available. Okay. Sounds good. So let me share this with you. Let's assume that I get good at all of these first three habits that we just talked about. Lead generation, lead follow-up, lead conversion. The next thing you have to get really good at, and this one, everybody thinks they're good at, but when you really stop and think about it, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not as good as that as I think I need to be. And that is profitability. You need to be in the habit of being profitable. It's not something you just do once. This is something that you need to do every day in your business. And being profitable starts with having a PL. And I'll tell you what, this, you guys, this is so critical. I, if I asked 100 agents in the business right now, if they had a profit and loss, I'd get about 20 of them at best that could show me their profit and loss. I don't care if you're brand new in the business or you've been in the business forever and have a big, huge team, you need to have a P&L. For those that have a big, huge team, you're going to use something like QuickBooks, right? Which is a fantastic program, does a great job. You're going to have a bookkeeper that handles all that for you. If you don't have employees, if you're new in the business or younger in, your, in, in the growth of your business, then guess what? You probably need to look at something a little less expensive, a little easier to use, like uh, there's a website, qbspecial.com. Go to qbspecial.com. That gets you access. We have a program there that we've, we've worked with QuickBooks on. It's actually QuickBooks self-employed and we get a discount on it. For $5 a month, you can have an app that connects to your phone that literally it, it connects with, it's, it's on your phone that connects with your bank statements, your credit card statements, and literally shows you every expense. You swipe left if it's a business expense, you swipe right if it's a personal expense. And it's like Tinder for money, right? Now you got a P&L at the end of every month or at the at, at, you know, that's actually good all the time. But you've got to do this. And I'm just kidding about Tinder. I've never been on Tinder. so. But I hear there's a lot of swiping going on. So 
you have to that, talk about a lot of stuff that you haven't done. Like I know, right? Tinder. <laughs> I hear all these stories and I'm like, it sounds like there's this cool life out there, but I just, I've stayed away from that stuff because something tells me it's probably not good for me. So. No, I, I'll confirm for you. No, it's not. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> that's hilarious oh that's funny all right so so i've stayed aloof of those things but that being said you got to have a budget you guys you got to have a p l you got to know where your money's at and i would recommend that at a bare minimum once a month you need to go through your profit and loss and just be aware of where you're spending your money just by being aware of where your money is going you'll be shocked at how much you'll save now when times get tight you need to be very careful you, your business is the goose that lays the golden eggs your personal life you know, though that you know your personal expenses; those are the eggs. So when times get tight, don't kill the freaking goose. What you do is you eat less eggs, right? So start by hacking expenses in your personal life, and make sure that in your business, there's three things you never cut in your business unless it's unless you're so in such dire straits that you're going to go out of business if you don't. There's three things that you're crazy if you cut. One is lead generation. Never. In fact, when times are tight, when other people are bailing out of lead sources, that's when I'm buying them. That's when I'm spending more on that stuff. I'm like right now I'm doubling down on, on lead generation, ISA, sales team. I'm doubling down on all that stuff right now while everybody else is freaking out. The second thing that you never, uh, you never cut when times get tough, you never cut your education and coaching. You need to understand you need somebody that's been where you're trying to get before you that can walk you through exactly how to get where you want to go. So never cut that. And the third thing is you never cut quality staff. Now I'm telling you, there's going to be team members that don't belong there. And whether you're having good times or bad, you don't need slackers on your team. You don't need to waste money on empty seats. What you need to do is you need to keep the great, no matter what's going on, those are the people that will help get you through those tough times. So, that said, budget is very important. Ready for the last one? Do I have time for the last one? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. So the last habit, and this is critical, and this is probably the most important thing I can ever share with you. And if you only get one thing out of today, I want you to get this right here. See that plaque behind me on the wall there? Can you read what that says? It says, no success in the world can compensate for failure in the home. No success in the world can compensate for failure in the home. This is our core value at Club Wealth. So everything else we do, we measure against that. Look, I'm all about helping you make millions of dollars. We have a, for taking people from brand new agent to doing three, four, five, six hundred transactions a year in two or three years. That's very doable. But I'm completely unwilling to do that at the expense of your family. You have to learn how to separate your business from your family. When I'm at work, I'm at work. When I'm with my family, I'm with my family. And the two do not cross over. And that's really easy to talk about and hard to implement. But when you implement it properly, you end up kind of balancing your life that you deserve and that your family deserves to have and your business is getting it deserves and needs from you. So the fifth habit is balance in your life, but not just lip service balance, actual balance. So those five habits, if you'll dial those in at a high level, then guess what? You'll have success and you'll have a great life. When I was doing all that business I was telling you about before, I was only working 12 days a month. Uh, running the largest team in the country. I was also still in production. I never got out of production because I really enjoyed listing appointments. So I was literally going on six to eight appointments a day, making 115 to 125 follow-up calls a day from my car in between appointments. And I still was managed to take most of the month to be with my family. You can do that point, but I will tell you this. If you're, if you're in what we call tier one, right, which is zero to 25 transactions a year, that's tier one, then you're not there yet. And this next year, you're going to have to work really, really hard so that we can grow your business to a point where you have enough people, systems, tools, technology, and, 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 and support in place to have less so that you can eventually take more off. Um, and we can talk about the tiers. Do you guys want me to walk you through that? Oh, well, we can do that in the bonus content. Perfect. Hopefully, Michael okay. can stay on for another 10, 15 minutes, which you'll be able to see on the Mel Wright website. We're going to close the podcast podcast part of the show. So, Michael, how can people find out? And I, I think you've done a fantastic, one of the best presentations on the show in the oh, three okay. years I've been running the show. And I think over a year with Robert, I actually think you've done one of the best presentations of any of our guests, Michael. And I really Thank mean you. that. So, Michael, how can people find out more about you and your company, what you're up to? 
Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. So for everybody watching right now, I promised you earlier I'd give you 17 of my best lead sources, but here's what I'll do. So since we're live right now, those people that will, I'm going to give you a phone number and I want you to grab your phone right now. If you'll do this right now, I'll actually give you 31 of my best lead sources. If you wait until the live broadcast is over, I'll still give you the 17, but for the people that take action right now, I'll give you 31. So the phone number is, you're, you're going to grab your, open up your text messaging app. You're going to send a text message to the number 727-287-5993. Give it to you again, 727-287-5993. And you're going to text the word Club 12. My, in my thing, one more time. For the Perfect. 727-287-5993. Okay, thank you. And you're going to text the word Club Wealth, two words, Club Wealth, to that number. And when you do, you're going to get a response back, and we're going to ask for your email address, and then we're going to email you the – but you have to put the words Club Wealth in there. And then what they'll do is they'll email you the – for those of you that take action while we're live, you'll get 31 lead sources uh, out of our top 109 lead sources. And for those of you that wait, you'll still get 17 um, but uh, go through that list and start. There's a lot of free, but surprisingly, there's a lot of great lead sources out there where you don't pay anything until you actually sell something. Uh, then you got to pay them a referral fee. Um, now, the ROI on those is lower than like a lead source like Robert's, right? Where when, when the ROI on the stuff that Robert does will be much higher. But you want, again, you want to diversify your lead sources, right? You want to have high ROI lead sources. You want to have fast, what we call cash conversion cycle lead sources. Cash conversion cycle is how long does it take me from the time I get a lead till it becomes a check, right? So things like pay-per-click and Facebook leads, those might be 12 to 24 month cash conversion cycle on average. Whereas like a sign call or a referral, that could be a 30 to 90 day cash conversion cycle. They're very fast, um, but you need to have a balance of all of this. And we'll go into that maybe in the bonus material. Yeah, that's, that's great. And Robert, how can people find out more about you and your company? <laughs> we already covered this. Go to inboundbound.rem.com, guys. I'm redoing all of my content in 2020. It is a fucking amazing site. Oh, whoops, sorry, my bad. It's an amazing site. Go there. John, over to you. And if you want to find out about more about MailRite and get a personal consultation with me and a one-page marketing plan for 2020, go over to the mail right.com site and you can book straight on the website i'm extremely approachable thank you michael we're going to wrap up the podcast stay on and go to the mail right website and you'll be able to watch the additional bonus content we'll be back next week with another great guest or an internal conversation between me and robert we'll see you soon folks bye So on to bonus content. So wh where would you like to go, Michael? Um, we can talk a little bit if you want about um, tiers. how different tiers are, are impacted, what type of lead generation different tiers need to have, what type of things they, they are. How, how is it different for an agent who's brand new in the business versus someone who did 20 transactions last year versus somebody who did 40 or 100 transactions last year? And there's differences. And what they should be doing are two very different things, and actually lots of different things. Right. So you want to go right into that now or <laughs> I, I would very much like that. I'm I normally I let John steer the ship in terms of the show, but but man, I, I'm telling you, even if my even if our audience doesn't want to know what your answer is, I do. So please. <laughs> nice. I love it. All right. So there's seven tiers. So we we over a long period of time, about after I'd been in the business for about 25 years, we came up with this tiered system. And we figured out that there's about seven tiers that agents fall into. And there's very distinct things that they need to do in their business. And they're different based on what tier you're in. And the tiers are very simply lined up. If you're a real estate can agent. I just, can I just yeah, interrupt for a second? Because yeah. um, I think you're so right. And it's something that me and Robert over the past years also hammered away, isn't it, Robert? Yeah. That people talk about different, what is the best CRM? What is the best online market? Well, it really depends where you are in your career, and there's a lot. There, is, there cannot be the, the one only answer because right. there is no one specific age. They're at different stages. So I'm, I'm so great that you you kind of emphasise that yourself. That's something that me and Robert, I think we have consistently pushed that as well, haven't we, Robert? 
Very much so. But so that's sorry, the problem you, with onwards, Michael. No, you're absolutely right. That's the problem with not only most coaching companies out there, but to your point, like CRM companies and just any all the thought leaders out there, one of the things that most of them miss, huge difference between between the answer that you should give someone based on what tier they're in. They just think it's one size fits all, and it's not. Be. And not only that, not only does where they're at in their business matter, like for CRM, for example, their entire tech stack matters. Like I, I need to know where you're at in your business, what your budget is, what, how much room you've got in your budget. Then I need to know what other technologies are you using so that I know what's going to integrate with different CRMs based on what you can afford so we can put a package together that makes sense for you so that you can get to that next tier. Otherwise, you go bankrupt before you get there. And so it, it's, it cracks me up when like you get a tier one that wants a $1,500 a month CRM. It's like, are you kidding me? Like that's, that's just crazy. You should not be spending $1,500 a month as, on a CRM when you're doing less than 25 transactions a year. So here's how the tiers break up. Tier one is zero to 25 transactions a year. Tier two is 25 to 75 transactions a year. Tier three is 75 to 150. Tier four is 150 to 250 transactions a year. Tier five. 150 to 500, tier six is 500 to 1,000, and tier seven is 1,000 units per year and more. Um, and each of these tiers have very distinct personality types and, and business avatars, if you will, at the different levels. Uh, and they're very distinct. And so for us, one of the things that makes Club Wealth Coaching very unique is no matter what tier you're in, you always have a coach that's in the tier above you. So they're still selling real estate, but they're doing it at a higher level than you are. And they've been where you are. So they know how to get, and they know what it takes to get into the tier they're in. We're the only coaching company on the planet that does that. Uh, and I, I've, I've never understood why everybody doesn't do that. I, I just, I've always been a believer. If you want to climb to the top of Mount Everest, you need a guide who's been to the top of Mount Everest before. Like it makes no sense for me to, to, to have somebody guiding you there that has no clue where the crevasses are. They have no idea which route to take. Uh, and so you've got to have the, the, a guide that's been where you're trying to go. So that said, if I'm in tier one, I'm very much pacing business, right? Very much in I'm making cold calls, fizzles, expireds, doing open houses. I'm doing things that I can do with my time to bring business in because I can't afford yet to do the things that take a little bit of money. I'll tell you, there's a couple of things that change as I make that transition from tier one to tier two, and this is a very important transition. It's arguably the hardest transition in real estate because this is where I go from chasing to attracting business. This is also where I go from so to building a team, hopefully. Uh, and by the way, for those that are watching, if, if you're not building a team or on a team right now, you're freaking out of your mind. Like, you have got to either be on a team or be building a team right now because in the next five years, that's what's going to be out there. So will there be some mom and pops out there, you know, doing, doing real estate on the side? Sure. But guess what? If you're serious about real estate, you want to make this your primary source of income and you want to make six figures, you're going to either be building the team or you're going to be on a team. Um, that said, uh, that transition from tier one to tier two. So if I want to start getting to where I'm doing 25 to 75 transactions a year, now I've, I've kind of got an idea of how it all works. Now I got to get really serious about reinvesting in my business. One of the biggest keys during this time is keeping your personal expenses small. You have to live super small. The problem is most agents as they make a little bit of money. That's exactly right. Jonathan nailed it. Their freaking expenses go through the roof. They just, their expenses become where their income has been. Uh, that's the worst thing you can do in, in a, in a good market. What you need to be doing is setting money aside so that you've got six to 12 months worth of expenses in the bank at all times. When that happens, when you've got that money setting aside and the market shifts, now you can go buy lead sources that other agents are giving up. Now you can go take over additional territories for lead sources that you couldn't get before. And all of a sudden you own all that. And so guess what happens? Everybody else is laying people off on their team or the people are leaving their team because they don't have leads anymore. Oh, and now they can't afford the support anymore because instead of getting rid of their car, that's got a $500 a month payment, they get rid of their freaking assistant, which is the dumbest they can do. And so now they not only don't, and, and, or they'll cancel coaching or they'll cancel lead sources or all three. And that's like the trifecta of idiocy, right? Because what happens when you get rid of those three, you have nobody telling you what you should be doing and where you should be spending your money that's already been there and knows. You don't have any leads coming in and now you've gotten rid of your staff. Why would anybody want to be on your team? 
So now they go to other teams. So the people that have had their financial house in order ahead of time, all of a sudden they get all the lead sources. They maintain their coaching. They maintain their quality staff. In fact, now they're hiring additional staff because all the best staff members around the, around the market area are now leaving their teams because their teams can't afford them anymore. So you've got your pick of the litter of the very best people out there. And now guess what happens? All of the agents start leaving those teams and coming here. I, um, I think you've made such a tremendous strong point that you've got to have six months to a year. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, if you have, when, when the market changes a bit and you're going to cut back on, on key elements of your business almost straight away, I think you've got something wrong about your business, haven't you? That's absolutely right. And that's, but that's the problem is that people, they, the first place they cut is their business. The, the people that aren't going to last will cut in their business. The people that are not only going to last, but the people that will, will blow up, they will just explode in growth when the markets are shifting, those are the people that cut back on their personal life during those times and they invest in their business during those times. It's huge. I can't begin to tell. I had a client today, um, just picked up <laughs> from one of the, <laughs> excuse me, one of their lead sources. They just picked up an additional market area that wasn't available before. Um, and I, I, and actually another one of my clients. So today, just to give you guys context, the people that are watching this, maybe because it's going to be recorded, you might be hearing this later. We are right now in the middle of the coronavirus thing that's going on. And right now everybody's, you know, on lockdown and we got all these, you know, shelter in place orders and all this stuff. And everybody's freaking out except for the successful agents. What the successful agents are doing is they're finding new ways. They're, I like to say, we look for the chaos or excuse me, we look for the opportunity in the chaos. There's chaos. There's always opportunity. And so what these agents are doing is they're finding ways to do things virtually. They're doing virtual shows, virtual listings, et cetera. And they're buying up lead sources as fast as they, as they can get them. I had one of my top clients, he did 500 and well, not he's, he's a, very, a very good client of ours, did 550 transactions last year. Um, and he called me up. I was doing my coaching call with him this morning. And if I was talking to someone in tier one, more often than not, they're saying, oh, I had to cancel this and I had to cancel that. This guy calls me up this morning. He says, hey, Michael, I'm thinking about spending another seven grand a month on lead generation. What do you think? And I said, let's talk. I like it. Let's talk about what and where. And do we need that? You know, do we need that lead volume? Do we have the agents to cover that lead volume and all that? After we did the numbers, we figured out that he only has the agents to cover about four grand a month out of that lead volume. So he's only going to increase his budget by four. But he's increasing his budget at a time where everybody else is cutting it. That's smart. Now, I was going to ask you, because I think Mel Wright is really aimed at the edge of the end of tier one and mm -hmm. the beginning of tier two. But what I've noticed we're talking to a lot of agents, even ones that are experienced, they're okay about getting an um, assistant. But where things really start to break down is when they start getting other junior agents, when they're actually managing that's where it tends to really to start to break down and it just goes into a pile of rubbish. I was going to use something stronger, but I said rubbish. Uh, um, You're much better would, than you, um, so would you agree right, with that? fill that in for you. Yeah. Would you agree with that, actually, Michael? Well, yes, if they don't get the education, that's a big part of where coaching comes in, right? That's a huge part of what we do. We're known as the team building company. Uh, and the reason why is because people being a great agent is not necessarily transferable to being a great team leader, right? They're two very different skill sets. Now I will tell you that the best team leaders were great agents. Um, but, you know, they've been there, they've done that. They understand they've, they've, they've got the t-shirt if you will. Uh, but they need to learn a whole new skill set to be a great business owner and team leader. And, and that's another thing is tier one, you're an entrepreneur, by tier two, you really need, it, well, and there with some exceptions, there's still some people out there that they might just have one assistant and they're doing 75 transactions a year. By the way, that freaking sucks, right? Like they think it's great because, oh, look how profitable I am. No, that freaking sucks, man. Like you have no life. You know what? I feel sorry for your freaking family. Like don't do that. That's a terrible way to run your business. And by the way, it's not a business at that point. You're just an entrepreneur. You're trading time for dollars. Stop it. If you ever want to get to the point where you can trade ideas for dollars, you got to build a business. 
And so building a business means having people on your team. And that's a new skill set. It means understanding profit and loss. That's a new skill set. It means knowing how to balance your business, you know, balancing lead flow with systems, with support, when, I, when to know when to change CRMs. Like there's so many factors involved that you have to learn. It's not impossible, but that again is why you need that guide who's been there before. Uh, but for the love of all this goodness world, if you want to make a great living and not be stressed out all the time, stop trying to do it alone. Build a business. Uh, it, it's so, so when it comes to hiring team members, you, hit, you said a word, Jonathan, that I think is the key word in, in what you said. And that is you, you said manage people. And I'll tell you this. Our philosophy at Club Wealth is if I got to manage you, I don't need you. We lead people. I don't want anybody on my team I got to manage. If I can't lead you, if you're not, if, if you're not interested in, in having leadership on the team and eventually becoming a leader on the team, I probably don't want you on my team. I'd be, because if I got to worry about what you're doing all day long, man, we both lose. Now, I'm all about accountability. So we do things like a daily huddle, right? Every morning we have our team leaders meet with their team for 30 minutes every morning where they do accountability, how many calls you make, how many contacts, how many appointments you set, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, we motivate them, we inspire them, we train them, and we send them out the door and help them, and, and, and help them be successful. That's a great tool to, to be able to lead your team. The difference is when we're on that huddle, we're not saying, well, how come you didn't set an appointment yesterday and I'm going to make sure, darn it, you work for me, so you're going to set an appointment. No, leaders understand that the leader works for the team, not the other way around. Does that make sense? So if you're on my team, you're my client. I work for you, not the other way around. And that's, that's one of the key differences between leadership and management. Managers think that, oh, well, I pay you, therefore you work for me. That's foolish. I've got one kind of final question then uh, to see if Robert's got a, a finishing question as well. And then we wrap it up and then we'll be in the hour because I'm respectful of your time, Michael. I just want to put this, I'm very critical of the regional and the franchise regional model of getting over like 100, 200 agents and having a lot of those agents as part-time people that sell four to six houses a year, but the brokerage makes a great percentage cut on that. I really see that in the medium to long term a disastrous philosophy even though it's highly profitable. What do you think of that statement? Well, I guess it depends on which side of that uh, stick you're on, right? So if you're, if you're on the end of the stick that's uh, one of those agents doing four to seven transactions a year, it sucks bad. If you're the guy that owns the brokerage, that uh, not, and I shouldn't say brokerage, but owns the franchise, uh, you know, if you're the franchisor, then those guys make a lot of money. <laughs> that said, you're right. And I, I won't mention it. We're brand agnostic. We coach people from virtually every brand out there. But I will tell you that um, most of the big major brands, their sweet spot is that agent that does four to seven transactions a year. Well, it's not only, it's there are, in my area of Northern Nevada, yep. there's some major independent agencies that are not part of franchises. And that's their model as well, very clearly. Yeah, there's, and look, there's a lot of great brokerages out there. And I will say this. I don't care what brokerage an agent's with, that agent chooses whether or not they're successful. I, I, don't, I don't need my broker to make me successful. I need my broker to cover my butt legally. I need my broker to make sure I'm crossing my T's and dotting my I's properly. I need them to be there for me when I have a hiccup and I need some help, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. I do not need my broker to make me successful. That's my job. And if somebody's looking to their broker to say, hey broker, it's your job to make sure I'm successful, I got news for you, right? Like that is not your broker's job. They don't have the bandwidth for it. Um, so I, and we, we actually have a broker owner coaching program as well. And we have brokers that go from, you know, they'll go from 10 agents in their brokerage to a hundred agents in their brokerage in a single year with us. Or from, I had uh, Mike and Long, we own the number one fastest growing brokerage uh, in Minnesota. And when I started working with them, they had 77 agents uh, in their brokerage. And they, they've, since then, every year they've been with me, they've hired 200 agents per year, every, every year since. So the, the difference though is, if you're going to be, if like for our brokerage clients, if you're going to be one of our brokerage clients, it can't just be about your brokerage growing. You have to grow the agent, right? Because what happens is when you grow the agent and you provide them with the systems, tools, technology, support, everything they need to be successful, 
all of a sudden the right agents will be. And if they're the wrong agent, you got to get them out of that brokerage quick. So if you're a cancerous agent, I want you to think about this right now. Agents watching this right now, ask yourself this. Am I a pain in my broker's neck? Am I a problem in the brokerage for them? Do I create issues and drama for them? Or am I the kind of agent that's pretty, you know, pretty easy going around the office? I'm helpful. I help out uh, and I encourage and inspire other people. I, and I, I help and educate them where I can in a very positive way. Which are you? Because if you're the first one, you might be a cancer. And if you're a cancer, if I'm your broker, I'm not going to want you there very long. Uh, so over to you, Robert, you got a question to wrap up the show. Um, you know what? I, there's been so many good topics that we've covered. Um, and we're, we're coming up on 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to say, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do part of what you normally do though. And I'm going to say, Michael, uh, you've been such a great source of information, specific tips at the beginning of the show. I hope that maybe John can reach out and ask you to come on Definitely. again. I think it's been a valuable right. for me. I think oh, please, please fun. come back on the show, Michael, later on in the year. It's just been a fabulous, fabulous interview. And uh, we've covered, so I, I thought, I was hoping um, that you were going to be a great guest and it's been, you have, and it's been a great experience. We'll be back next week with another, hopefully great guest or another conversation between me and Robert. We'll see you soon, folks. Bye. Bye. Super.